So I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, and pretty much Hendrix didn't have any of these, and you are probably wondering why am I showing you all the cables that I have? And you're possibly wondering, oh my god, yet another cable video. Yes, another cable video, but unlike other cable videos in this cable video, we are going to be talking about cables, but from a little bit of a knowledgeable and technical perspective, specifically for guitar players and how cables work with different pickups, amplifiers, how Hendrix got his tone and how the cable affected his sound and a lot of great stuff which will make you really, really happy. Now you're also probably wondering who the fuck is this guy? Well, my name is Marco and you can call me Mr. Slightly, because after this video, you'll be at least slightly happier. Now I get this question asked a lot of the times, hey Marco, I've got this 150 euro cable, should I buy it? Fuck no, go get a different amplifier, don't waste your fucking money on a fucking cable, all right? Now definitely in this video, we're gonna be talking about vintage setups, but also about modern setups, because not all people play the same music, not all people need the same cable, let's say. Now, in any case, the general thing that we do on this channel is we get some kind of beverage. In this case, I obviously have my shroom cup, which is filled with something that is not coffee. Uh, but it will be filled with coffee very soon. So, I encourage you to spend the next few minutes with me listening to me talk about cables and tone and technical stuff and all the good stuff. So, I hope you're ready. Let's go. All right, so cables should be fairly simple. They're used as interconnects between different systems. We basically use them and the signal is going to travel through this cable and it's going to be received on the other end of the cable and you know, like that kind of stuff. But you know, cables come in actual different colors, which is super cool. They come in like different forms, materials different, lengths different, connectors and a lot of different important stuff. And what's important to understand right off the bat is that Cables do sound different because cables are filters. That's the right way how you should view cables. They're actual filters when you have two systems and you interconnect them. Imagine that you're putting another filter between these two systems. Now the question is what kind of filter do you need and what kind of filter do you like? Because sometimes that filter doesn't cost 200 euros per meter or something like this. A very important thing to understand here is that this whole cable talk comes from a different world other than our guitar player world. The only world that is, in my opinion, worse than the guitar player world. A world full of egotistical maniacs it is the hi-fi world. The only world worse than the guitar player world. There you go, I said it. <laughs> Now in hi-fi things are a little bit different and yes, definitely all cables make a difference and there are different qualities of cables and all this good stuff, that's super, super cool. But I want to check how the cables work with our actual guitar systems and then you will be able to decide whether you really need a certain special type of cable or should you be just relaxed and play your guitar. Now all cables, and I say all cables have a resistance, capacitance, and even an inductance, which is there, but it's quite negligible, especially at this length. Now, when it comes to resistance, there are definitely different types of conductors. Usually we use copper cables. You could possibly make platinum cables if you have the money to pay for them. But yeah, definitely we use copper cables and there are different types of copper. Copper comes in many different quality ranges, different purities, different handling and cooling procedures, which would make the crystalline structure inside of the copper different. Therefore, it's going to conduct differently. It's going to have a different resistance per foot or meter, and it's definitely going to sound different. So different types of copper, different sounds. Now the capacitance is a thing that actually matters the most, especially if you're playing passive guitar pickups. Why? Because passive guitar pickups are actually inductive and the capacitance of the cable creates a filter with that inductance, obviously with the resistance of the cable and the pickup, but mainly with the inductance and really alters the sound of our guitar. Now there are different things in the cable that account for the capacitance, insulation, resistance, the way how the insulation is laid out and all that kind of good stuff and therefore we have different cables and they pretty much all have different capacitances. 
we can actually put this to the test with my LCR meter. We can actually measure cables. So if I take this Ernie Ball cable and if I measure the capacitance on this cable, we are going to get around 510 picofarads. Now here I have a cloth cable that you can actually buy in a shop and I get 313 picofarads. I hope that you can see this, all right? Now the third cable that I have as an example here, it's a DIY cable, but it's also a cloth cable. I just made this cable and installed some nice Neutrik jacks and the capacitance that we get is around 230 picofarads. All three cables measured here are of equal length. Now let's go to LT Spice and we're gonna do a little bit of a simulation and I'm going to show you how actually pickups work and how cables affect the sound of the pickup. Okay, so what I have laid out here is an electronic simulation of a guitar pickup, some potentiometers, and approximately five meters of cable. And I have three pickups. The first pickup being like a typical Strat pickup, another pickup being the typical like Telecaster bridge pickup that you would see. And then the third pickup would be a very high inductance pickup, which would be some kind of high gain thing humbucker, something like I have in my PRS 513. Now let's simulate this and let's look at the frequency response. Okay, so this is the Strat pickup. This is the Tele pickup and then you have this humbucking pickup. What can we see from this graph over here is that the higher the inductance, the greater the loss in high frequencies. Therefore, the, the small resonant frequency is actually moving to the lower frequency range. Now, the next test that I want to make is I want to take the same pickup, but I will simulate two cables by just changing the capacitance of the cable, which is effectively in parallel with the capacitance of the pickup. And we are going to basically compare the Ernie Ball cable that clocked around 510 picofarads, compare it to the DIY cable, which was 232 picofarads. And let's see what the frequency response of the pickup will be with these two different cables. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so this is the 510 picofarad Ernie Ball cable, and this is the DIY cable. So if you take a closer look at this, you would see that basically the DIY clouds cable is going to give a little bit of more that top end, which a lot of people would consider to be like super nice, and um, a lot of people would consider this to be better. Now, since we are using the word better, it is fair to make a quick sound comparison. Okay, so I actually think that the difference between these two cables can be clearly heard. Now, again, we are asking the question, is, is this really, really important? Now, before I get into that, I have to say the cable length is of the utmost importance here because the longer the cable, the more of this kind of loss that you are going to get. Now, definitely, we have just demonstrated that there are different cables and that they pretty much sound different. Oh, and by the way, if you like this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel it is absolutely free and check out the slightly technical academy at slightlytechnicalacademy.com it's my new website where i'm preparing a lot of great audio engineering stuff courses there's some great tone x packs go visit there registration is for free there are some tech pages knowledge to be had so enjoy all right so i think clearly we can hear a difference here. And a lot of people would go for the second example because the second example sounds a little bit more open and brighter, which is definitely the case and which will work for a lot of people. But I actually wanted to talk about Jimi Hendrix and the whole Hendrix and vintage thing here because I think it's really important. Many people know that Hendrix used to use this very long coily cable and coily cables being like <laughs> really bad when it comes to, I mean bad when it comes to this capacitance thing. They had a lot of loss, but what do you get in return? Well, basically when the sound gets lossy, what happens is, is that this little resonance actually grows. 
which is kind of weird. So you're losing a lot of something, but you're actually getting a resonance and it's actually moving into the vocal range, which makes the guitar actually more vocal, which is something that a lot of people like about Jimi Hendrix and a lot of the old guitar players. Their guitars used to sing, their guitars used to speak. Well, this kind of resonance, it practically simulates the formants of the human voice. And as it goes lower in the range, you're basically getting more of this vocal thing. Now, naturally, you are losing a lot of top end, but you also have to consider that people used pickups, which were lower inductance back in the day. Plus, what they would do is they would crank the Marshall all to 10. Now, whoever tried cranking a Marshall everything to 10 would know that doesn't really work nowadays because basically the signal that we're putting into the Marshall is quite a bit higher than it was back in the day and we don't have these losses because of better cables and that kind of stuff and the amplifier starts oscillating and doing all kinds of shit but back in the day pretty much what they were connecting to a Marshall was a very muddy and dull sound so then they crank the presence and treble and all this kind of stuff and it's just in the sweet spot but it doesn't necessarily work nowadays but wait I mentioned expensive cables what are expensive cables and how how different are the expensive cables from just the regular cables that I have over here? Well, those expensive cables that are sold by different companies, they actually employ different techniques and use higher quality materials, more expensive materials effectively to create a cable that effectively has less resistance and less capacitance per meter. So basically what I'm trying to say here is that you are considering investing a lot of money into saving some frequencies that are not generally in the guitar range that are generally disliked by most inputs of pedals and amplifiers and you are losing the little resonance happening effectively making your signal flat bright and boring <laughs> Now we're coming to the part where I actually want to say something from a technical perspective about amplifiers. So amplifiers don't really like a lot of top end at the input. Especially if you're working with high gain amplifiers, they tend to be sensitive and they tend to be microphonic. And a lot of the times they would actually appreciate that you input something that's a little bit duller and darker because there's a lot of presence and treble on tap to like open it up and brighten it up. Now I absolutely agree that's not the same compared to when you're putting a bright, a very strong, good signal. And we are coming to the topic of buffers which is something that a lot of people use and myself included because I really don't like losing a lot of the top end. I always like being in the sweet spot and there are definitely buffers that sound better than others. And that's exactly that. Some buffers just kill this resonant frequency and just make everything super flat, which is not nice, at least not nice to me. Some buffers actually sound phenomenal. David Gilmore used to use some which absolutely sounded phenomenal because they would actually do this little bit resonant frequency which just kills some of the top end that you don't need, creates a small bump, makes the guitar vocal, and voila, you've got Pink Floyd. Now, a lot of people use active pickups, and it's worth mentioning that active pickups don't suffer from this thing. If you use like bad cables or high capacitance cables with active pickups, they will not affect the tone as much. Now definitely like in hi-fi, everything makes a difference. And for sure, there are gonna be some differences and I'm not advising people to just use like bad cables or whatever. I'm just saying, it doesn't affect the pickup tone as much as it affects when you're using passive pickups. Now we are coming to the end of this video and many people say, Marco, make a fucking point. So I want to make a fucking point because people want an answer. Here, I'll give you an answer, all right? So what kind of cable should you buy? Here's my opinion. In the guitar world, I would never spend money on expensive cables. Most legendary guitar players don't really care what kind of cable they're using. They're just using a decent cable, a good cable. And I would always advise buy a decent cable. Now, when I say a decent cable, we just saw the Ernie Ball cable lose the battle against my DIY cable because it was a little bit duller. But to be honest, when I'm playing my Marshall, I don't really notice it. So I also use the Ernie Ball cable. What I like about this cable 
is the fucking color. Can you see it? I think it's too bright. It's like this fluorescent green. I got it as a gift and I absolutely love this cable. And I like this material. You know why? Because it's soft. I feel like this cable is sturdy. I feel like this cable is going to survive on gigs. And for me, I would always choose that above you know, like 100 picofarads of capacitance. Now, when it comes to a DIY cable that I made, this is a Klotz cable, which in my opinion sounds great. It was also not cheap. This is some kind of high-end best I could buy Klotz cable. But to be perfectly honest, I will never buy this cable again. You know why? Because it feels kind of stiff. It feels kind of hard. The best experience that I had was with Sommer cables or Zoma in German. It is a thing that we can sort of get in Europe and I'm by no means just like advertising for like Sommer cables. I just remember them being really soft and in a way elastic. They felt great and they survived so many gigs and they sounded absolutely fine. So get a good cable that is going to survive many gigs. Plus, I always advise using the best Best jacks that you can possibly find because you know cables usually break here they don't really break in the center I mean really depends on how you treat them honestly if you're into modern music and maybe into some modern metal productions you would want to consider a little bit better cables with like less capacitance and you want to get a little bit of that top end that is simply the style of production and of the music that people play absolutely go for that if you're into vintage stuff then I would advise against using like buffers use just use cables you don't really need to pay attention to cables or even you can exaggerate by buying those extremely expensive coily cables which are you know they're practically shit but what happens is that they are going to give you the effect that actually Hendrix had. The effect of losing a lot of that top end and making your amplifier actually sound hmm should we say better or make it sound more old. But simply that is a way of exaggerating this effect in light of achieving a certain sound. So use it as a filter. A cable is a filter and it should be used as a tool. I hope you like this video and I'll be seeing you in the next one very very soon.